Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmerced.com. So make sure to go to freesounds.alexmerced.com so that way you can download all sorts of free samples and presets for FL Studio. And make sure to check out my tutorial playlist for other cool tutorials. Now today's topic is going to be mixing and mastering. So mixing is just making sure that you can hear all the different sounds that you have going on in your production in a way that they don't like conflict with each other and you can hear them all clearly and then mastering is just trying to make sure that you can maximize the volume of your production so it doesn't sound quiet when you when you render it so first the mix now this is where equal equalizer plugins become real useful because the idea is to take each sound and sort of isolate its frequency bands so that way it's not fighting other sounds its frequency okay so for example I'm going to show you this little clip that I have played and we're going to mix it Okay. So if you if you listen to it, you know the bass is kind of overwhelming, um, and you the drums, you know, you just don't hear them as well. Okay. Now if I were to turn back mixing, I already did notice the difference. Now if I turn it off. Now I did this using the equalizer plugin Equo. Okay. Um, another one you can do it is using the parametric EQ, and I'll show you both. But basically, with Equo, what I usually like to do which is pretty straightforward. So if I were to turn this back on, okay. What I do is I just drop all the bands. So like, let's say I were to put in another instance of Equo into there, so you can kind of see how I get there. First thing is I do is I just drop everything, sort of very low volume and then I hit this pencil tool here so that way I can choose individual bands and then depending on where I want the sound whether I want like low, medium, high I'll give it only a few bands where I push it so like for example the bass sound I want to make sure that the sub bass was there and maybe a couple of the lower end bands with a little bit of the mids to capture some flavor so I raise those bands and then what I do is for each sound I try to give each sound sort of its own two or three bands so that way technically the frequencies that you're really hearing there really isn't anything else kind of going on in that frequency I like equo for that because it's really easy for me to just kind of click and isolate these bands um, okay and whatnot so that's why I like the pencil tool because I can isolate one band at a time and have patterns like this okay and that's basically how I did what you just heard now let me turn off Turn on the effects for each of these channels. Doot, 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 doot. Let me take out this extra equal that I put in. None. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the equal I put in each channel and put in a different equalizer called Parametric EQ2. This is probably the more popular way of doing it. Um, <clears throat> and basically, you got like these seven sort of knobs here. And then what you do is you play the sound. Let me just turn off the other equals at the same time. Do do do. Do, 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 do. Now for this one way I've seen people do it is you you play the song. So there you can kind of see how it's like right around here where the bass moves. So what I'll do is I'll move the whole line down a little bit. It, may, it doesn't necessarily need to be moved that dramatically down to get the right effect, but um, I tend to like to make sure they're very isolated. I'll drag two up here so I have like a little bit of a lump right where those frequencies were where we saw sort of it like rolling around like right there and then what I want to do is you go right down I think it's right here no you go for number two it's here and then you can kind of sharpen the increase there you don't necessarily you don't want this like fat sound you kind of want to like isolate it so you end up with something like this Okay, now I'm going to do that for the other ones. So I'm going to go here, add a parametric EQ2. So this is for the hi hat. Find it right over here. Just 
stop that, like getting little CPU issues there. But let me see, let me tighten that up. Okay, cool. Then we go to this is the snares, parametric EQ2. Okay, and then finally the bass drum. See there now it's much clearer so again let me play that with all four and I'll turn off the effects channels. Okay, so now it's time for mastering. So I'll go into the master channel and I'll put it on another plugin called Maximus, which is for the purposes of uh, mastering. So we'll go to each of the different bands and we'll try to master them individually. So we'll hit solo so that we were only so that we will only hear that band. here that I'm playing with right now, that will tell you how, what it considers a low, so I can make it consider a low over there, but I'll just keep it to there. So I'll look for where the average volume is, which is right around here, and then we'll bring this down a bit. Try to play around with it. Like really, really, if you're doing it right, 
all the sounds should really be below the blue line, zero dBs. Uh, I definitely have some sounds over that, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It depends what sound you're going for. You'll get like a more distorted sound if you do that. Um, I don't mind that sometimes in my low end. Uh, sometimes the sound of sort of distorted clipping is uh, I find enjoyable. So again, it's to your ear. But then again, the idea is you go through each band and you just kind of basically think of this as like zero dBs and you're just trying to curve that band because the idea is that the more closer you can get sort of the peaks, um, the range of volumes for each band, then what you can do is you can push the overall volume up by hitting the master and then pushing up the pre and the post gain on the master, you push up the overall volume. Uh, so, and then what you do is usually already built in is a free limiter right here on the master channel that's already built to sort of just keep it at zero dBs. Okay, and then if we take a look at this right here, where you can see where the sound is, that kind of keeps it just in case you do have some stuff that goes over zero dBs. That last fruity limiter will just give it a solid stop and nothing goes over that zero decibels because you're not really supposed to go over that because you can't hear that through most sound equipment, so you end up with clipping. So again, the steps are, is once you have all your sounds, you equalize them. Now as the songs get more complicated, it gets more difficult because you're going to have to equalize things differently throughout the song. So you might actually have like multiple EQs on one insert channel, and you'll toggle them on and off through automation depending on you know what's go what different sounds are going on in the song and how you want them to the frequency. So it can actually end up taking, you know, once you actually make a song, which may take you know, a full-fledged song, which may take a week or two, may actually end up spending another week or two just on the mixing and mastering process. Because again, you, you have to make sure that the mix sounds good throughout the entire song, and same thing with the volume. So you may actually have to, you know, well, with the, hopefully through mixing, you can keep that sort of, again, the volume range fairly close. Because the idea is as long as the dynamic range is fairly close, like the lowest lows and the highest peaks aren't too far from each other, um, the idea is you can easily use pre and the pre and post gains options on Maximus just to push up the overall volume. Okay, and, and if you're sort of new to the game and you just kind of want to get a quick result, um, okay, so I mean, this is if you want to really kind of really tailor your sound to get it to sound really nice. But if you're looking for, you know, a nicer sound and you, without with a lot less work, you can always just slap on a sound goodizer. Okay, and then just... Uh, that. And basically all Sound Goodizer is is a couple of different Maximus presets, um, which can oftentimes definitely push up the volume of your overall track and make it sound a little bit more full. But it's a sort of a blunt tool, so as your tracks get more complicated, it's just probably not going to cut it because there's just too much going on. But again, if you're new to FL Studio, you're not talking about that many different things going on other than just drums, a bass, and a lead, and maybe, you know, one or two other sounds. This will help at least make your, in your first sort of, you know, your first crop not so bad. But I do recommend getting more acquainted with Maximus and Fruity Limiter. Uh, I didn't really talk much about Fruity Limiter. There's tutorials on Fruity Limiter. I recommend you watch those. It's just a compressor. So what it does is it just helps compress the, 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 the distance between the peaks and the lows. Um, but again, the idea is you always the more you do that, the more you run into clipping. So the idea is you want to compress to get those peaks and lows closer together, but not so much that you, you ruin the quality of the sound. But once you can get those together, then... Okay, and that again, technically, you have two features here. You have the limiter, which just basically sets a limit to how high a lot of the sound can go, and the compressor, which again compresses the highs and the lows. Um, and then here we get the side chaining thing, which I've talked about in a separate tutorial. So that should give you a pretty good heads up. There's a lot of like equalizing, uh, equalizing uh, plugins out there. Although the stuff that comes with FL Studio, Maximus, and Free Limiter, Parametric EQ, Equo, I think all that's pretty powerful and useful within itself, but um, there's plenty of stuff that you can get out there um, if you prefer, and some stuff, you know, will cost quite a bit of money, 
Um, but I mean, if that's what you prefer, that's what you prefer. Okay. So my name is Alex Merced from alexmerced.com. Have a great day. Again, check my check. Uh, download all my free tools over there at free sounds that alexmerced.com, and do check out some of my songs on Spotify um, or iTunes or Amazon. Just look up Alex Merced, and you will.